Apple II compatible wire-by-wire -wire build. The Power Rails. By me, Dr. Matt Regan. In this playlist, I'm building a 65 CO2 based Apple II compatible computer. And really, I'm trying to achieve a few things by doing this. I want to demystify the process for those that have never built a machine by hand. And hopefully I might encourage a few people who are on the edge to have a crack at it. There are a lot of Apple I builds out there, but the Apple II, and particularly the Apple IIe, has a complex interface environment. And I really wanted to get that sorted out before tackling this, the Turing 6502, which is in the next playlist. This is where I build a simple TTL-based 6502 microprocessor based on the principles of a Turing machine rather than on a von Neumann architecture. Most of the chips I use in the Turing 6502 build, the ROMs, the RAMs, and the flip-flops, will be introduced in this build. But I'll be using this build as a reference design, and I'll take the Arduino interface developed in this build to use in the Turing 6502. Now, I want to go through the equipment I used in this build. There's nothing super expensive or difficult to obtain. First, the soldering iron. I'm just using a cheap 25 watt iron for this build. But look, that's probably as high as you want to go. Lower wattage irons are a bit more forgiving, but they can also be a little bit more frustrating as well. Any soldering iron is capable of causing a nasty burn, and it should only be used with parental supervision if appropriate. So these are becoming a little rare now. It's a wire wrapping tool. I only actually use it to cut the insulation on the wire. It'd be very hard to complete this build without fine nose tweezers or side cutters. I use both the solder sucker and desoldering wick quite a bit. These are just for fixing up mistakes. I use them to remove temporary solder joints used to hold parts in place. And finally, a logic probe. It's become a bit of a lost art to use a logic probe, but it really is the first line tool for figuring out what's going on in a digital circuit. All right, now for some of the parts. Again, nothing too expensive or difficult to obtain. First is this 30 centimeter by 18 center pre-drilled prototype board. That's 12 inches by seven inches. And I just got this from China on eBay. Use an Arduino Mega 2560 for the keyboard interface and to emulate the floppy disk system. I also use it pretty extensively during the bring up stage. 30 gauge wire wrap wire. I like doing builds with this sort of wire. I usually use red for data bus, blue for the address bus, and black for control lines. And I usually pre-stretch the wire a little bit, which allows the shielding to move over the wire once cut. This is a bit of an unusual build technique, but it does make it a lot easier to wire things up. You'll see me do this quite a bit during the build. And I tend to use slightly thicker 28 gauge wire for the power signals. And obviously I need solder to, well, solder things. I'll socket all the chips in this build and I like using these machine sockets. I think they're meant to be higher quality and they are more expensive, but the metal pins are actually quite solid compared to other socket types. And that's really the main reason I use them. It just makes wrapping the wire around them a lot easier. Some 10K resistors. And these are called decoupling capacitors, and their job is to supply some top-up current to the chip while the gates are switching. The rule of thumb is one decoupling capacitor per chip. And I use a large-ish electrolytic capacitor to smooth out the supply voltage. Note that these capacitors are polarised, which means they have to be connected the right way. And lastly, a push button for reset. I've mounted the Arduino upside down, which hides the reset button on the board, unfortunately. So let's see what I plan to use for this part of the Apple II motherboard, the CPU, the ROM, and the RAM. I'm using a 65C02 microprocessor, a 128K static RAM chip, and a 512K byte EEPROM. Each chip needs its own connection to the 5 volt supply line and to the ground line. The other part I want to wire in at this stage is the 74HC374 D-type octal flip-flop. In fact, I need two of them. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry, we'll go over it in a lot more detail later. But for now, they need to be connected to the 5 volt line and the ground line. For some reason, I really enjoy placing the chips in the early part of a build. I don't know, it just makes me feel like the project started. But for some reason, wiring the power signals is one of my least favourite parts. But it's very important not to make a mistake, so I usually do it first. I've already placed the Arduino on the board, and some of its pins are off centre, so I had to make a little cut in the board to make it fit.
The zero volt line from the power supply is called a ground rail and it needs to be connected to each chip. Now I'll hook in the decoupling capacitors. Now for the 5 volt rail which needs to be connected to each chip. Reversing the power supply can destroy a chip. It's also important that you don't accidentally generate a short to ground somewhere. And don't forget, like, subscribe, share.